It's finally live. Update 22, Plains of Eidolon. Upon logging in, the first thing you will of course see is a giant thank you to basically anybody who's ever played the game. Obviously, you would expect me to start this in the Plains of Eidolon. No, I'm going to start this with the new weapons. And, of course, the new frame. Weirdly, there she is. She did make it. Gora was rumoured to possibly be delayed by a week or maybe more because the quest might not be finished because she is behind a quest. She did make it in and her abilities look absolutely amazing. The giant glass sword thing, it's like a spear she shoots out. The fact that all this glass stuff on her comes off and acts like a shield. The decoy type thing for her third ability and the molten glass she shoots out for her super, her uber, her fourth ability. I am really looking forward to this and 125 armor is pretty decent, 150 energy also pretty decent. She does of course come with the new weapons. There is the primary. This thing, is, to me it sounds weird, blast enemies with glass slugs for a, basically and I know that it says devastate on impact. But where is it? Oh, the blueprint is actually right here in the market for this as well. Not bad looking on the stats for this either. There is, of course, the secondary that looks like it, you just throw glass at people. Not a good idea. Never throw glass at people. That's really, really bad has two modes, full auto and semi-auto. Again, damage wise, not that bad. Semi-auto seems to have a lot more damage. Same sized magazine, bit more status. I don't know, maybe tempted on using these in semi-auto rather than full auto. The blueprint for this is also in the marketplace. There is also the big glass hammer. This I've been looking forward to. Mastery rank 4 does seem a bit low. Does need two Argon Crystals and despite doing that video saying you should farm for Argon Crystals the day before this goes live, I didn't do that so yeah. Big mistake there by me. I really should have done that. But it's more, this is basically a giant glass hammer and it doesn't do the damage I was really hoping for. Then of course there are the two Grenier weapons. The first of which, Mastery Rank 5 melee weapon, can split into a dual sword from everything I can find about this thing. Definitely a dual wielding version of this weapon, I knew I'd seen it somewhere. The reason I can't find it is the research is inside the lab and yet again my clan has beat me to this. I've just come in and it's already researching. Second, of course, being the other primary weapon that, well, it has two fire modes again. I'm not that fond of weapons that have two fire modes. It can get kind of weird. I use the Zenith quite a lot. That has an alternate fire. I don't think I've used it in the longest of times because I prefer just the way it fires normally, whereas this is kind of inverted from that where the secondary is the full auto and the primary is the semi auto. This blueprint however is inside of the chem lab which is dojo research. This thing which is the arc wing launcher segment that allows you to launch the arc wing in the plains of Eidolon, this needs to be researched in the Tenno lab the research for it actually isn't that bad. 60 Tellurium, mine is of course a mountain clan. I don't plan on upgrading to a moon clan anytime soon because these research costs will go through the roof. Considering 300 people are meant to help with these, the two weapons in the Tenola, in the clan dojo research stuff, the dual wielding melee weapon and the 
Grenier Primary are both done and fully researching. This has got an entire contributed of nothing. Nobody has put anything in this because not many people know where this is, is or what it's for. There is also the new Mag Deluxe skin that I'm hoping this zooms in because not only is this thing on her neck not attached, but neither are her arms. And it does come with the Tonfa skins you see here, though holding them kind of weirdly and you can just see it there. The joints on the elbows, well the elbows here, and the shoulders, yes, this thing looks amazing. And something I've just realised here, they've actually split the deluxe thing up. The Sandana can actually be bought separate to the actual collection. So if you are not interested in the Tonfa skin, of course you can pick it up normally. And you can pick the Sandana up separately. See this? That is small, subtle, but still better than that glass one. That glass one just... I don't know what it is. It had so much promise to it, but there's nothing hanging off it, and it just looks like it's been thrown on the back. Still looks nice, but compared to other sandanas, definitely not up there on my list of favourite ones. Of course, people would also have noticed these. This is the armor bundles for your operator, because the operator can be turned into a warrior operator, and now can wear armor. Whether it does anything or not, I still have no idea because I was reading through the release notes and it didn't really say if this was just a visual thing or whether these will add armor. If it added armor, something here would obviously say that. With the rework of Focus 2.0, you will notice that the lenses on all of your items have gone. All your frames, all your weapons, all the logos will be gone. These would have been returned to your inventory so you can go back in, go back to actions, <laughs> go to lenses where I have 130 for some reason and they have all been returned back in here. On the note of Focus 2.0, all of it should have been returned. All of the Focus rep earned should have been returned so Jumping in here, you should have an insane amount. Not as much as I thought again. That's weird. But obviously, you're, go you're going to have to start this whole system all over again. All of the trees have been reworked for different things. I like the fact that this kills from melee will grant 10% more affinity. I'm still going to run Naramon because I like that so much especially for leveling up melee weapons it really did come in useful and then obviously void hunter is now over here actually no that thing that's a completely different thing i'm thinking of there but you will have to come in you will have to unlock every single one of them all over again and the reason that it was returned and the way that the return worked is only the focus that was installed into stuff used focus was returned if you had four million and you didn't put it into the focus tree possibly that was not returned unlocking the focus trees kind of the same as it was before i will of course go into this in more depth wow you have to unlock each bit bit by bit and installing the focus that is way quicker than it was before that used to take a long 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 time and it's actually going pretty damn quickly and it's actually forcing you to upgrade before you can level it up again yep definitely liking the rework mode simply because that was really quick not of course to forget that kuva has now been added to the sorties and you'll notice that lenses have gone they are now only available through Serta, the plane of eidolon town but all lenses are actually completely gone from this and 6,000 Kuva, that is actually a lot. That has made sorties insanely useful. Not only that, but now it also includes missions in the void, which 
I love the void. Now, weapons, focus 2.0. There is new mods and everything else on Certus, which we will get to. I will obviously have to cover these in more depth pretty much later on because already this video is insanely big. But where actually, wow, that stands out a lot. The Plains of Eidolon seems to be locked behind Certus. Plains of Eidolon, the town. Wow, <laughs> that was kind of expected. And the way that this is going to work is Certus is like the relays. It's open, you can go there whenever you want. It will have other Tenno there, but the planes themselves won't. And this video has been seen time and time again. I'm going to jump this because that it shows you coming in around it and then basically cutting chunks of flesh off the walls. Actually, that wall there. Will it be able to see it? Yeah, because the towers are living towers. They've actually got chunks of meat behind them, as you can see here. As they, Yeah, that's kind of gruesome. Let's just move on into the town. I'm getting distracted again. There is new people in here that you can see and you have to Basically level up to get reputation and such in here. This town is huge. I did not expect it to be this big. We will come to him in a second. But there is somebody in here for mining. There is somebody in here for fishing. You have to see people for quests. For the, like little missions for when you go out there. Where is the guy for the mining? This place is huge. The fishing guy is over here. Get rid of that. And obviously you can come here and buy. Wow, you have to buy this platinum. New. Oh, you have to buy a fishing spear using reputation. How are you meant to get the reputation to buy the fishing spear? There is a lot of stuff. The fishing side of this is going to be huge, but you can buy lures here and all kinds of other stuff to go fishing with. There's the mining guy. This is also going to be a big part of it, and that's the Ayatan sculpture in front of him that I'm really looking forward to see how they have. I want that on my landing craft. I would also like to place Endo, but this guy, same kind of thing. You have to... Yeah. <laughs> That's a great start. That also kind of crashed my game a little. You have to buy the thing to go farming with, and this has added a lot of... It was listed as resources, but these you can very clearly see are gems. Plains of Eidolon scene. Oh! Ah, oh, I want... And yes, that did actually break my game. Um, can I please get out of your menu? Because I actually lost my frame for a minute there and had to bring up the map and guide him back here because, well, if I actually, if I do this just right, oh, I'm stuck on something. Come on, round the corner. Yes, go speak to the fishing guy. Now, Frost is over with the fishing guy, but the camera's stuck on the mining guy. If this was expected. This has just come out. Where is Mr. Armory? Yes, you. This is kind of huge. This is basically where you buy parts for the weapons to build your own weapons. Uh. Oh! He will actually sell you a pre-built weapon for Platinum. That's going to be really useful. But you can build lots of... You can see them on the wall here. Because obviously I don't have any parts to put in on this yet. Again, update has just come out. But you need the three parts and then you can build. You need the handle, the blade. Not really sure what the third thing is you need. But it needs the three parts. The affinity 
or the, sorry, the mastery points for these weapons, because as you can see on the wall alone, there is one. There's one here, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different weapon combinations here. That's eight weapons you have to build to get eight times the mastery. The only thing I can find is before the update went live, Steve was live on Periscope and mentioned the fact that you have to build it, prove that you're going to use it by maxing it to 30, you bring it back, you then, what was it he called it, and I did note this down. You have to then gild in it, where it changes and looks better, kind of like the one in his hand here, and then mastery points will be available to you. So you have to build it, level it up, come back here, prove that you, basically that will prove you are using it, and then you can start earning mastery ranks on it. So this whole process of building weapons is going to be huge. You can also name a weapon, but you will need to prove there it is actually guild. You can donate or the raw parts for the standing. Hmm, this is a, another aspect that is just going to be mind-blowingly huge. Of course, you cannot create your warrior operator until you complete the Sire's Vigil quest, so this room will remain locked for the time being. The bounties can be got by this guy at the door. I'm just having a quick look. Wow, this stuff actually... Possible reputation, you can get the Austrian rep from here as well. That obviously needed to level stuff up. You have... Oh, Gora's systems. Gora's neuroptics. Where are they? Eidolon lens blueprint. That is the new lens added for Focus 2.0. That is going to be way better. And they've also added the Furix Wraith to these. And there is Gora's chassis blueprint, the one I couldn't find from before. Now this is where it gets kind of weird. This, as I mentioned earlier, Certus is a like a relay, it's open, it has lots of people in it, but you will see as soon as I step outside here, yeah, the guy standing by the door, no longer in my game. He is gone. Now let's take a quick look at the planes of Eidolon. That loading screen there, I know it jumped just a tiny little bit, but... That was not bad at all. And I still think these things from certain angles look like feet. I don't think I've actually mentioned that. I actually have the, this image saved as a desktop from, it would be kind of over this angle. And yeah, look at it, feet. <laughs> uh, ankles, feet. It is very clearly foot looking. Oh, I think it's just the angle that I've kind of got it at, but damn. Ah, uh, what I would not give for the ability to use my arc wing right now. Should also have mentioned, uh, yeah, you now have 12 slots in your gear instead of the standard 8 to account for things you cannot carry. This is insanely useful because I've had to ditch things to fit things in, like the remote observer here, I took, I think it was shields, because you've got energy restore, health restore, and I had shields in there, not the large one, the medium one, because I don't have access to the large one because I'm not with that syndicate. There are four new spare ones. Anyway. We'll leave this off here for now. As always, there will be a link in the description for the full forum post on this. I don't know about anybody else, but I am still stupidly hyped for this whole area. More so to actually take on an actual Eidolon when it goes nighttime. Of course, it's 100 minutes for daytime, followed by 50 minutes for nighttime. The cycle is set up to not last that long, actually. You could easily spend the time out here really quickly. And of course, Grenier campsites. There are two new enemy types. It's 
they're really that's the same enemy type it's just new factions they're the same faction they just basically have different colors on i think one of them was i couldn't even tell you the name of them offhand anyway we'll leave this off here for now while i try and get stuff done there will obviously be a lot more on the plains of eidolon as i realize that that's going down it's not a good time to be out here Thanks for watching, wish me luck, and I'll catch you next time.